Welcome to a presentation on, on creating a decision-making matrix. Now, uh, developing a decision-making matrix is basically a way to um, present your ideas in a, in a logical fashion so that you're actually making a decision based on actual criteria and not just by going what aesthetically might be pleasing to one person or another. And so let me break down how that works for creating a decision matrix. And this is kind of the, the look of what you would see here. You have the different ideas that you would want, want to propose, and then you have different criteria, like whether it's the cost, complexity, all kinds of things like that, and then you rate those individual things. So let's take, for example, let's say you're trying to figure out the, um, an idea for doing some modeling um, some modeling bricks or some modeling cubes that you can make puzzle pieces with and you want to model different kinds of ways to put them together and so you have a couple different options that you can use well, let's go over those options and we'll see how this uh, this um, uh, decision making matrix actually comes together so let's say for your first idea you want to use modeling clay now some of the advantages about it um, or I should say maybe some of the just the qualities of it is one it's easily reusable it's you can it's malleable you can shape it and form it easily it's it's easy to get a hold of um, now you do need to actually form the cubes yourself so that that adds to the difficulty it's a little bit sticky and the geometry isn't very precise now let's say idea number two we use caramel cubes they're cheap they're easy to get they're already shaped as cubes. Again, they're sticky, um, which could be a good or a bad thing. And uh, the geometry, again, isn't completely precise. Idea number three, on the other hand, is uh, dice. Now, they are a little bit more expensive. They're easily reusable because they don't like wear out or melt or anything like that. Now they do require some additional help to get them to stick together for making the puzzle pieces we want because you'd need some two-sided tape or something like that. Uh, they're moderately stable and they do have a very precise geometry that's not going to dent or bend or, or get out of shape. And idea number four, uh, the centimeter cubes that you might have se may have seen in math class, they're cheap, they're reusable, they interlock, so that's good, but they do have those little protrusions on them, which can be pro problematic. And they, again, they do have a very precise geometry because they're just made out of plastic, and uh, so they won't bend and things like that. Idea number five, foam blocks. Another good choice because it's inexpensive. Well, no, they are actually are expensive. Uh, they're easily reusable. Again, they would require some kind of sticky tape to keep them together, and they tend to fall apart easily. The foam doesn't stick to the tape very well, and the geometry isn't as precise as some of the other um, things like the dice and the uh, centimeter cubes. And then finally, design idea number six is for those puzzle pieces we want to make using sugar cubes. They're really cheap. They're easy to get a hold of. They would require glue or something like that because the tape doesn't seem to work very well. Uh, they are kind of messy because they start falling apart with little bits of sugar falling everywhere. And they're fairly uniform in their geometry, but they get chipped and start breaking apart. Well, we've got these ideas that we want to use and we're trying to solve this problem. Now, what, what's our next step? Well. We want to idea, identify some criteria. What is important to us to rate our, our different ideas? Now, let's say we've decided on these different criteria. We want the cost to be cheap. We want them to be easily reusable. We want the geometry to be fairly precise. We want there to be an easy way to connect them. We don't want there to be much of a mess when we use them. We want them to be resilient. They're going to they're gonna keep their, their shape. And we want to uh, uh, have some kind of level of testability uh, that they're, they're easy to work with. Okay? 
Now there's other criteria we could have used. We could have used how they function, uh, what it would cost to develop them ourselves, or to manufacture them. Uh, we could have bigger objects, smaller objects, uh, by rating the size, by rating the, uh, their safety level, um, all kinds of things. But the point being is we decided which were the most important things we wanted to rate. And we should probably keep it to about six things, right around there to figure out what would work best. So we need to prioritize what's the criteria we really want to list. Now the next step is ranking that criteria. Uh, generally, we want a pretty simple scale. Uh, in this case, four being the best and one being the worst. So we can rank it one to four. Um, so uh, now we could do something like one to three or one to five. Uh, one to four works really well because it forces the people doing the rating to not just go middle of the road, that they have to rate something either slightly better than the middle or slightly less than the middle, and that helps make a, makes a good deciding factor. Now, if it's a question of um, it must have, like some kind of it must have this kind of attribute, like it must be cubed, okay? Uh, now, that's a simple one and one we didn't include in our uh, criteria, but it's, if it has, comes down to a, um, a must-have, then we would rank it with a 1 or a 2, meaning yes, it has it, 1, it doesn't have it, and uh, this, this kind of factors into our, our issues. And it might be that those kind of things, we would throw things out if they didn't have, if they just ranked a 1 on that. Or it could be uh, something just simple where it's hard to rank it. It's just it has it or it doesn't like it's a cube or, or something. Now, our setup. Now, this is what we had before. Um, we have our different kinds of, off to the left, we have our different kinds of ideas. We had the modeling clay, the caramel cubes, the dice, the interlocking centimeter cubes, foam cubes, and sugar cubes. And then along the top, we have our actually criteria we want to look at. We have the cost, the reusability, the uniformity uh, of the geometry, whether it's self-adhering or not, if there's cleanup needed, uh, the, the resilience of the model, and the testability with other parts. And then we have a total section. Now, when we rank these, we don't want to look at one, like say, modeling clay, and work through all of the different criteria. We want to compare each of the actual uh, um, ideas and look at one criteria at a time. So in this case, uh, we would look at like the cost. So we might rank the modeling clay as a two, being it's kind of expensive. Uh, caramel cubes, cheaper, so they get a higher rank. Dice, very expensive, so they get a lower rank. The interlocking centimeter cubes, very cheap, so they get a very high ranking. The foam cubes, they are also very expensive, so they get a low ranking. And then the sugar cubes are also very, very cheap, so they get a high ranking. Okay, And we do this for each criteria, one at a time. We don't mix them up. We stick to one criteria at a time, going now to usability, looking at each um, idea we have, each example then going to the geometry, then whether it's self-adhesive, and you'll notice in this one, or as self-adhering, you'll notice in this one, this was a one or two question, meaning that it was either a yes or a no. Modeling clay, yes, you can kind of stick it together. Caramel, cu cu caramel cubes, yes, they kind of stuck together. Dice, no they didn't, we had to get tape. Interlocking cubes, yes, they stuck together. Foam cubes, no, they didn't, neither did the sugar cubes, okay? So those are just would rate a one or a two for yes or no. And you go through this entire process until you finally come up with a tally or the total of all our scoring. And then once we rate that, we can start figuring out pr pretty clearly which one came out ahead. And in our case, the correct decision was the uh, centimeter cubes. The, and the whole point of this is that the decisions 
should be based on actual analysis of the criteria, not just what someone thinks is good or what they think looks good. Okay, so the decision matrix, as it says here, it is a design tool that may be used multiple th times throughout a design process because as you develop uh, different aspects of your uh, design, you may run it back through the decision matrix to see if it's still working the way you want it to as new ideas come up or changes to uh, your uh, previous design cause it to change a little bit and you need to look at it again through the decision matrix. And this is kind of how you use the decision matrix and how it will help you make good logical and analytical decisions about which design you should go for and not just a matter of voting for people wanting their favorite one.